This is an SM Media production. Things are gonna get better real soon. Yeah, I'ma just do me, you just do you. I swear it's gonna get better real soon. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of The Sit Down right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPie, delighted to be your host as always. Delighted to welcome a very special guest onto the show, former Hibs, former Celtic, former Wigan defender, Scotland legend, Gary Caldwell. Gary, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you onto the show. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, it's good to be here. How are you? How's everything been since lockdown? Good, uh, or as good as can be I think at this uh, moment in time, but Homeschooling has been challenging. Uh, I think the the whole thing has been challenging, really, for for everyone. But hopefully, we're getting to the the end of it. There's some light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and we can get back to some sort of normality normality soon. Definitely, it's been a it's been a funny season this season. Obviously, with no fans and things like that. What's been your thoughts in the the football season this year? Yeah, again, really challenging. For, for players, for staff, uh, for, for supporters who, who can't get to the game and uh, kind of let off the, some steam and, and yeah. kind of that uh, passion that, that they bring every, every Saturday or every midweek game. Uh, so I think it's been a challenge. The players not having supporters in the stadium, I think some players have benefited from that. Others have, have probably struggled from that. Some clubs have benefited, others have struggled. So... Uh, it, it has been a big challenge for everyone. I think it will also be a challenge when supporters do get back in yeah. the stadium, readjusting to that environment again. So it will be interesting to see how that how that changes things once that happens. Definitely. We'll talk about, about your, your early, early years before you get into football. What was your kind of boys club days like and your, your kind of heroes growing up? What made you kind of get into football? Uh, my dad, really. My dad was a, was a junior player. Uh, for Bones, Camelin, kind of local junior teams around about Stirling, played for East Stirling as well. Uh, so he was really, you know, well, as soon as we could walk, I had a bigger brother as well who who was into football, which I think helped me a lot yeah. uh, du- during, you know, that period and, and right through my career. Uh, so, yeah, basically from, from the, the days that we could walk, we had a ball. Uh, we were only a year and a half uh, age gap. So, you know, we always had somebody to kick that ball with. Yeah. Uh, which I think makes a big difference if you if you don't have that kind of partner, you have to use a wall and that and that can be mentally more challenging. So I think having Stephen for both of us, it was a, a great help for both of us. Brilliant. What were your kind of days like at obviously you were at Celtic Boys Club first then, Hutchie Vale? Like what was your days like there? Did you enjoy them? Uh I would I was actually Stephen that was at Hutchie Vale. I was right. at uh Barrettburn, a local Barrettburn uh, juniors. My dad was uh, manager of the local amateur team along with uh, James Fowler's dad, uh, right, okay. Jim. Yeah. Uh, and they were both uh, managers of, of the amateur team. And I, I had played originally for a team in Larbert called North Bromwich Colts. Uh, Stephen had played for that team as well. And then he went on to Hutchie Vale. Uh, but when, when my team got to about under 12, 13, I think it was, uh, the guys that were running it didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, they were they were kind of it was taking too much time away to their family. So uh, it was my uncle Jim from who was from Bannockburn who set up uh, kind of took the team from Larbert to, to Bannockburn and I played in that team with uh, Paul McHale was in that team who went on to play uh, professionally as well yeah. and and we were a really good uh, boys club team. I mean, how does the scouting process work for Newcastle? Like how when did you first hear about that? Uh, so when I was when I was about 10, 11, uh, Hearts were the first team that actually, first professional team that invited Stephen. And I was fortunate whenever Stephen got invited, I, I tagged along and yeah. and kind of got got to get invited as well, which was, like I said, was a, a great thing for me and helped, I think, in, in my career. Uh, but it was a guy called Scott Gibson from, from Bones who, who was at Hearts at that time. Uh, who, who took us there uh, and then he actually then went on to be the scout for Newcastle the Scottish scout for Newcastle so 
uh, we we had known him since we were very young. He's he was you know a family fr- he, yeah. he had become a, a family friend because we've known him for that long. Uh, so when he went to Newcastle, uh, he took Stephen and then and then myself to Newcastle. He took a lot of players. Obviously, Brian went to Newcastle as well, but he he was a very good scout. Uh, and, and Scotland and took a lot of players to good players to Newcastle at that time. Brilliant. What were your youth team days like at Newcastle? Uh, brilliant days, great, uh, great laugh. For, I think first and foremost, you know, to to we actually me, me and Brian used to go down when we were still at school. Uh, so on a Friday, I I, I I can't quite believe it now that I've got kids. My oldest kids now fourteen. Right. And I would have been at the time probably 15. Uh, my mum would put me on a train at Stirling. Uh, I'd get the train through to Edinburgh and then have to change uh, platform, uh, which I still don't know how I've done it to this day. Uh, <laughs> and Kersey would be on the, the train from, uh, it was a Glasgow train, but it stopped at Motherwell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he'd get on at Motherwell and it'd go direct uh, to Newcastle. So I'd meet him on the train Friday night. We'd have a little packed lunch. Uh, go down to Newcastle, stay with the youth team players. Stayed in a in a hotel at that point, or like a a guest kind of B and B that that was was owned by Newcastle, and they had a family looking after them. Right. So we'd stay there. We'd stay there on the Friday night. We'd play the youth team game in the morning, and then straight on the train and back up, get up to back home for kind of early evening or or, or mid evening on on a Saturday night, but. Uh, just a brilliant experience that to do that at 15 year old and obviously to, to do it with your mate uh, yeah. was 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 brilliant and and play for the youth team at, at 15 year old was was a challenge because we were playing against kind of 17 18 year old boys and uh, that was brilliant and then we obviously went down there full time and uh, me and Brian originally stayed in the hotel and then we moved into Diggs uh, and Whitley Bay. And then we eventually got a, an apartment together and, and basically the whole time we were there, we, we stayed with each other and, and kind of that whole experience, not just on the training pitch. When we got away from the training pitch, we lived together. I was the cook. Uh, Kersey was a disastrous cook. Uh, <laughs> and we actually, when we moved in together, we had a pool table when we used to, we'd play pool for who done the dishes. Right. And we used, we used to have some, Epic pool battles. Uh, it was like best of thirty-five frames or something <laughs> stupid. But just young boys with obviously with, with dreams of being a football player and uh, living the life, really enjoying enjoying that that journey and and the, the kind of the highs and lows of that. It was a, a brilliant time. Brilliant. When you when people mention Newcastle in the days, the, the first name that comes out is Bobby Robson. Just how what was he like with you? He was fantastic. He's actually someone I can uh, not, not not regret, but wish I had him later in my in my career and yeah. kind of appreciate, appreciated how how good a manager he was. I I'd, I'd, all the managers were excellent, different in different ways. But Kenny Dalglish was my first manager, then Ruth Hula, yeah, uh, and and then Bobby Robson. So three icons really mm-hmm. of of football in in different eras. Uh, but Bobby was. Somebody who now looking back was extremely honest. Uh, I remember when I wanted to go loan and stuff, or or wanted to kind of see where where I needed to go. My, my agent said I would have been about seventeen, eighteen at the time. You need to go in and see the manager and see where you stand. And I was thinking, you know, like, I need to go and see Bobby Robson. It's not, it's not your kind of average, you know, manager that you have to go and chat the door. So. Uh, chapped the door and he was always very uh, welcoming uh, yeah. really really good with people uh, but then he had this <laughs> kind of brutal honesty it felt like at the time where you would ask him you know you know what you needed to do to, to get in the first team and and he would just literally list off <laughs> you know you're not quick enough son you need to be better at defending you need to head it better you need to pass it better and he would just go through this list and you would just sit and listen and and like I said at the time you're young you're, you're you've got this confidence your self-belief that you, you you want to go and progress your career uh, but looking back deep down he, he was 100% right and uh 
he gave you that kind of motivation and, yeah. and, and told you honestly to, to say, you know, you've got to go work in these things. And if you do, then then you might have a career, but uh, this is this is what you need to do. So uh, you go away and work in that or, or I, my kind of thing at that point was I, I wanted to, to play games. So I said, you know, I'd like to go on loan if that's possible. And again, he was always, you know, very, very good with you in that regards. And rather than keep you in... Uh, your career kind of stagnates a little bit. He, he let me go and loan and, and play games at, at uh, championship level or up in Scotland with Hibs. And I think that was vital in, in progressing my career. Brilliant. See your loan spells at Darlington and Hibs, like, well, well they just, did, did you feel the benefit of them? A hundred percent, yeah. Uh, Darlington was, was really interesting because it, uh, I got a call on uh, Monday night, it was kind of late Monday night, to say they, they were interested, they'd seen the reserve game. They were in, it wasn't at the time, but it's effectively League Two now, so the bottom uh, league uh, in England. Uh, and I was really keen to go, wanted to play, and literally turned up. They had a game on the Tuesday night, turned up for the game on the Tuesday and walked in the dressing room, had never met anyone. Right. Uh, and again, as I, I think I was 17 at the time, that, you know, in that environment, having to go in with adults and, and, and put yourself in there. And, and basically, I, I started the game. I played the game that night and uh, played four games there that were, you know, an eye-opener to, to professional football yeah. and the demands of professional football. People were playing for their mortgage, to pay their mortgage. Mm. It was their life. And, you know, that was a real eye-opener to me to, to see what winning football was. I think too often now that the younger players they don't see what winning football is. They they learn how to play the game and pass the ball and uh, receive the ball and and play tactically different ways. But uh, f- football's about winning mm-hmm. and and that character that you need, uh, the attitude you need to to have every day. That was a big eye opener for me and and to to see that firsthand was 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 good for my development. Brilliant. You go on to Coventry with, with Gary McAllister. Do you remember how kind of good that was for your career as well? Yeah, that was... Uh, so, after Hibs, uh, I signed a new contract with Newcastle and uh, within it, there was a, the first year was going to be on loan, uh, mm-hmm. ho- hopefully in the Championship. And uh, Fortunately, I got a, a brilliant club in Coventry with Gary McAllister, who was player manager at the time. Yeah. Eric Black was, was the coach. Uh, so, you know, Scottish people uh, and, and playing with Gary uh, was was a brilliant experience to, to see his level of dedication, his his quality. He was he would have been about 39, 40, probably the same age I am now, actually, and, uh, around about that. And he he was still, you know, the fit one of the fittest players yeah. uh, and, and still a very good player. And uh it was a good experience because of the, the championship was was a really tough league, 46 league games. You know, again, I feel like each stage in my loans, I, I, I jumped up a little bit in terms mm-hmm. of quality and, and that was good in terms of my, my, my development again. Brilliant. And then obviously you, your, your fourth loan spell was at Derby and then like, what, was, what was that like? Did you, as you said, was it just a good step up as well? Yeah, Derby was the one. So all my other loans, I felt like, well, the, the, the club wanted me back. They asked for me back and I, I left for, for different reasons or, or we couldn't get it done. Uh, but Derby was one where I, I was poor. I, I didn't perform well. I had been... So I'd been on loan at Coventry the previous season and then went back to pre-season at Newcastle and got a little bit complacent. Felt like I would have been involved in Newcastle because yeah. that didn't happen. My, my standards slipped a little bit. I didn't get as fit as I was uh, the previous season and then the opportunity came to go to Derby and I wasn't ready for that opportunity because of certain things that had happened at Newcastle and that was a, a lesson that you know no matter what's going on uh, in, in football you never know when your next opportunity is coming mm-hmm. and you have to train and prepare uh, 100% so when I went to Derby I wasn't fit enough didn't perform as well as I had in previous loans and then got sent back after I was there for two months and they were looking to they were going to look to extend it, but they, they didn't extend it. So that was a that that kind of moment where you go, you know, I need I need to I need to do something about this. Uh 
I need to learn from this experience and, and improve. And I had to get back to Newcastle and, and work hard to, to get back to the, the levels I'd been at before. Yeah. And how, what was the kind of process like uh, uh, leaving Newcastle? And how do you kind of look back in your time there? Uh, so, yeah, when I went back, it was in January. I was trying to go on loan again. Uh, financially for, for clubs it was difficult so Newcastle would just uh, kind of release me at that point to, to allow me to, to go on loan uh, I was only contracted till the summer so it wasn't you know years it was just a few months earlier uh, and again it was a, a kind of difficult moment where yeah. where you, you, you signed for Newcastle with the dreams of, of playing for them and playing in the Premier League and didn't didn't achieve that, didn't get that opportunity. So uh, I always believe that at that point, you know, you have to do something about it as, as a as a player, as a person. Uh, it's testing your character and, and can you come back from this? So that was a difficult moment, but was fortunate that I went to Hibs and, and kind of got another great opportunity playing for a, playing for a brilliant club. Yeah. You, you go, obviously go to Hibs. And what was your first impressions of Bobby Williamson? Yeah, Bobby was uh, someone that he, he took me there. Well, oh, sorry, he came in at the end of my first loan uh, and he was someone that I'd worked with. He came for one Scotland under-21 game in, right, okay. in Poland mm-hmm. uh, and, and got on really well with Bobby. So uh, w- when I went back, I knew, you know, I knew the manager, I knew the club, uh, I knew what I was I was going into. So that, that made it a lot easier to leave Newcastle and, like I said, have that, you know, great opportunity at, at Hibs. Uh, they're waiting for me. Brilliant. You go in, it's a really good team you get into, obviously, and you, the first memory you have is the, the semi-final one against Rangers and then, obviously, the final against Livingston in the League Cup. Like, what was your, what were they, were they kind of baptisms of fire in a way, like getting into big atmospheres like that? Yeah, it was brilliant. That's, you know, what, why I originally went on loan was to, to get those, those opportunities, those games yeah. against Celtic and Rangers, but, uh, when I went back the second time, obviously the the semi final was was brilliant to, to beat Rangers on penalty kicks. The, the pressure of that uh, there's still that brilliant picture of of all the the kind of young faces of myself, Kevin Thompson, Scott Brown, Derek Riordan, uh, Gary O'Connor, Stephen Whitaker. You know, like really good young Scottish players uh, filled that team and. Uh, to to win that game was great. To then lose in the final was uh, again another experience that you have to go through. You have to learn from. I, I remember standing watching some players and staff went in, and I said, "I'm staying. I'm, I'm watching Livingston go and lift, lift this trophy." I think one, it, it's respect. It's what you yeah. should do when when you lose a cup final. But I also wanted to use it as a as a kind of pain that that. It's never going to happen again, and I was fortunate. I never lost an, another cup final uh, that that I was involved in, and uh, I think those moments are vital in your development and your career. That you you use those difficult moments to to get better and, and to make sure it it doesn't happen again. Yeah, definitely. You get your first Scotland cap at this point as well. What was you feeling like when Betty votes picked you for that game against Romania? Uh, it was France. My debut was against France. Right. Okay. Uh, the the five nil game, which g- great to get picked. Uh, obviously disappointing to lose five 0 but they were they were a brilliant team, a world class team. Uh, with Zidane, uh, Henri, Trezeguet, uh, Petit, Vieira, they were just top top players. And again, uh, as part of their development, that is you know the the pinnacle for me, the the the, the best that that football gets. Uh, so just to be on the part with them is good, but also after it, you have to look in the mirror and, and see, you know, where you need to improve, see where your deficiencies are, and and it's it's back to the the training pitch and and hard work, but back in the gym to get stronger, to get quicker, uh, to to try and com- compete with with the, for me the best players in the world. So that mm-hmm. was the the, ch- the challenge after that game. Brilliant. Yeah, you obviously your time at your season at Hibs is over, and you've a trial with Vitesse. How did that come about? Yeah, so I, I, I just sent to Hibs till the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was kind of out of contract. I was I was a free agent at that point. And 
my agent had got me a, a an opportunity to to trial out in in Holland with, with a massive club. Uh, it was something I always wanted to do in my career was was to play abroad. That maybe not that early in my career, but uh, the the opportunity was there, so I went over for a week's uh, training and. Uh, they actually offered me a contract, but they, they wanted me to play right back. And right. anyone who's seen me play right back <laughs> probably probably can't believe that. Uh, and, I, and I didn't feel like I was a right back. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the Hibs, you know, uh, it gave me time for the Hibs contract to, to materialise. Tony Mowbray came in yeah. as Hibs manager that summer. Uh, he was keen for me to be part of his, his plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, whilst it, there was an offer there, it was never really something uh, once Hibs were, were interested that I was going to uh, move forward with. And then, obviously, Tony Mowbray comes in and then you, you mentioned earlier just how good the team was. It's no secret they were Scottish, a brilliant Scottish core, but did you think at any point in your time at Hibs you could spark the old firm? Yeah, that was our, our aim. Uh, that, I think if we'd had another few years of growth, of development, of... Uh, playing games together, getting that experience. We were a little bit naive at times, probably. We played some fantastic football. We were very attack-minded, uh, but on occasions probably a little bit naive uh, and, and needed to, to develop a bit more for, for that opportunity. But definitely one-off games, we could compete mm -hmm. uh, with the old firm and always give the old firm a really, really difficult game. Uh, but I think everyone knew that team was, was going to get broken up and, yeah. and go to the old firm. Quite a lot of players went and then and obviously beyond to, to the Premier League as well. Yeah, definitely. You finished third in your first full season at Hibs. What were the highlights of that season? Uh, I think we beat Hearts uh, at, at Tynecastle. I remember a game where we beat Hearts for, for the first time in a long time. Hearts were, were almost like our bogey team. They... Mm -hmm. Hearts were a very physical team at that point and, and could, because we were so young, they, they could physically dominate us. Uh, and and we we beat them once at Tynecastle, but Tynecastle was a notoriously difficult place to go for everyone. But with the type of football we wanted to play on the tight pitch, it, it was difficult. So beating them there was great. But finishing third, you know, was, was a massive achievement at that yeah. point. Hearts were a really good team. Uh, Aberdeen were a really good team. Dundee United were a strong team. So, uh, you know, I think the league in, in general was a lot stronger at that time. So it really was a, a big achievement. And then obviously the season after, you get into Europe with the, and then you go up against the deep pro and it's a, it's a disappointing defeat. Like, what was your kind of thoughts? Thoughts that? What kind of went wrong that day? Uh, that that was a brilliant experience for that team, mm -hmm. young team, young manager as well, Tony Mowbray to, yeah. to to play in Europe, and we, I get probably again naivety. We were, I think it was two one till till pretty late in the game, and then we 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 overcommitted and and really went for the game, and that's you know why we got beat so convincingly. It wasn't, I don't think it was that there was that golf and class in terms of the the quality of the teams, but uh, through our naivety trying to get back into the game we, we we took a bit of a hammer in. and that was our, our problems on occasions where if we weren't playing well that well we, we would lose a game and we didn't have that ability uh, to, to win games when you're not playing well or to, to understand what, what was needed within the game and I think all players that, that comes with, with playing games and, and experience and as a team we didn't really have that yeah, and obviously Hearts that season do really well. That was a George Burley season. He's he's end there on beaten run and now and he's won three now I which just was were they kind of two big big memories for your time at Hubs? Yeah, the three 0 game I was actually I was either injured or suspended. I was I wasn't playing the three 0 game and I, I remember it was the famous uh Ivan Sproul game where he yeah. came on and scored big big Gaz O'Connor came off and and, and he's Discussed at the manager, he, he said, "What's he going to do to Ivan Spell?" And he scored the hat trick fifteen minutes later. Uh, so that was a good answer. But uh, that that it was just that that team was, you know, like I said, could beat the old firm on any day. They were we were fearless in, in how we played the game. We, you know, we respected teams, but we didn't over respect the old mm -hmm. firm. We would go to Ibrox and Celtic Park and 
and really have a go at them and make it difficult for them. And that was one of many, you know, great performances against against the old firm. And obviously at this point, when when do you first hear of Celtic's interest? Uh, Celtic's interest. I'm not sure exactly. It came during that that season. Uh, they they were. I, I knew through my agent they were interested, and then uh, Gordon Strachan actually uh, in the January I was free to talk to clubs anyway. Uh, you know, so there was no nothing was ever done, especially behind Tony Mowbray's back. Everything, yeah. you know. That, that happened, I, I, I let him know he was informed all the time. And Gordon Strachan actually came round, uh, had a flat right in the centre of the Edinburgh. And he came round to, to have a chat with me one night uh, after, after January. Uh, he was he was keen to sign me when Gordon Strachan and, and Celtic kind of show that interest in you, then I, I think there's ever only ever going to be one outcome. Uh, and, and then I signed the pre I actually signed the pre contract on a Thursday. Right. And on the way back to from Glasgow to, to my house in Edinburgh, I phoned Tony Mowbray to, to let him know to say, look, you know, I've signed the pre-contract. And he was he was delighted for me first yeah. as a as a person, first mm-hmm. and foremost. He was obviously disappointed for the club. Mm-hmm. Uh but I remember him saying, Do you do you want to play on Saturday? And I said a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh and actually older players in the team were were saying to me, you know. I shouldn't play. I'm, you know, I could get injured. Anything could happen, uh, and I should look after my career. But I felt like I was contracted to Hibs. I had a commitment yeah. to Hibs, and I had to see that out till the end of the season, and, and that's what I did. Brilliant. How do you look back on your time at Hibs? I loved it. It's a, it's a brilliant club. Uh, I still the sunshine on Leaf is still <laughs> up there with one of my my favourite songs. Uh, I still, you know, have have fond memories. I, I love going back to Easter Road and yeah. and and kind of seeing the people there. Uh, and it is a, a club that I'll, you know, I think all, all clubs you play for, uh, you you look at the results. But Hibs is is definitely because I had the two spells there. And, uh, it's a club that I always look back on with really fond memories. Brilliant. Something that happened over the summer this this period you you remember fondly the Karen Cup. What was your memories of that? The Kirin Cup was, it's actually, a, it was an unbelievable trip. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it, it felt like a kind of, not a holiday, obviously, because we were working, but uh, just a brilliant experience. Uh, going to Japan, uh, we played the first game. We It was, it was difficult because of the, the travel and the, the time zone was, was really difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember we flew out and played the first game against Bulgaria. Uh, we were all we would all come for breakfast at like four or five in the morning, and we would train, and you'd be you'd be knackered at training. And then we went out and played amazing against Bulgaria. I think we beat them four or five one, yeah. uh, which is unheard of for a Scotland team to score that many goals. Uh, but it was a, a brilliant night for us. We then had a few days. Kind of rest, recovery. Walter was brilliant with the players. It was end of season, so you know we trained, but it wasn't. You know we weren't getting kind of slogged on the training pitch. We had loads of time where we could go sightseeing and in, in mm-hmm. Japan and different things. We then got a train. I can't remember where we would play Bulgaria. But we got a train to Tokyo, right? Uh, and I remember the hotel. We stayed in this massive hotel with, with a glass lift that, that went up. Uh, just next to the Tokyo Dome uh, Stadium. Yeah, but we played we played in the stadium outside the uh, Tokyo, uh, and we drew with Japan 0 nil, and it was a classic Walter Smith backs against the wall, all hands to the pump, uh, defensive performance, and uh, we ended up winning the Karen Cup and had a brilliant night out in in Tokyo after the game. Omar had had. Done his usual recce and sorted us some bars. We actually we, we watched. We went straight to a bar and watched the Liverpool West Ham Cup final when Gerard scored late in the game. We watched that in a bar, had some food and some drinks, and then went on to a nightclub. And the rest is is a blur, so <laughs> so to speak. But I remember Walter said, uh, 
he said every when we were going back to the, the hotel, he said, Look, he's a go now. And we had beer on the bus and everyone was having a good time. He said, But the bus leaves at nine o'clock tomorrow morning for the, the airport. And he yeah. said, Make sure you're on it. That was all he said. And when Walter said something, you you listened to him. Uh so we we got in at God knows what time, and I was rooming with my brother, Stephen was on, right, on okay. that trip as well. Yeah. And in our wisdom, we decided to get a couple hours kip before the bus when most boys were, were just going straight for the night onto the bus and we ended up sleeping in and at about 10 past nine our, our uh, hotel phone went and it was uh, Richard Simpson who was like get down now and we like shit ourselves and as we were coming on the bus you're like sorry gaffer you know like terrified of all or and he just looked at us and he went the two fucking Caldwells <laughs> <laughs> And so we kind of gingerly walked up the back of the bus, but everyone on the bus, we were singing on the bus at nine o'clock in the morning on the way to the, the airport. And brilliant trip, brilliant memories with, with great people, Walter, Ali, Tommy Burns, yeah. uh, brilliant squad of players, you know, all in it together. Uh, good people and uh, great memories. Brilliant. Moving on to Celtic, what was who were the good kind of players and characters that they were into in the team? Like when you went when you first went in, who kind of stood out to you? When I, I think the, the Celtic team, the, the good thing about it was it had quite a, a Scottish core, you know, younger Scottish players. Which, uh, looking back and what we achieved was was an amazing uh, thing to have so many Scottish players. But uh, when I first went, Lenny was there. Uh, Stan Petrov was still there, to- uh, Alan Thompson, John Hartson. So there was still a, a fair bit of the Martin O'Neill team was was still Aye. there. Uh, it was Gordon Strachan's second season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the players left, Tomo left, uh, Stan Petrov left, John Hartson left. And then, like I said, it became more you know, younger players. He signed myself, Kenny Miller, Derek Reardon, Mark Wilson, uh, and then that added to Sean Maloney, Aidan McGeady, Stephen McManus, John yeah. Kennedy, uh, David Marshall. So it was a real Scottish core in the team. And then after that, obviously Nakamura, uh, then I got a Hesselink, Tommy Gravison came for a, for a bit. And uh, a, a really good team, a really strong team, uh, fully winners, fully characters that, you know, t- training was... Training was harder than games sometimes mm-hmm. because of the, the competitive nature. You know, when Barry Robson came and Paul Hartley came, just to get in the team was was really difficult. So training was full-blooded. There was tackles. It was, you know, quite often the odd fight mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that, that had to be broken up. But, you know, looking back, that's that's what it demanded. That's what the club yeah. demanded. Uh, and that's what we needed to, to be successful. And that was... It was probably the best, the best club team I, w- I was involved in in terms of uh, having to win every week. The characters we had in that team, uh, it was a brilliant team to, to play in. Yeah, definitely. See, obviously you mentioned Thomas Gravison and that the kind of stories are, are legendary and things like that. Was he as mad as they say he was? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, he was mad. He was mad. Uh, a, a brilliant player. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the five sides, he was your he was your first pick on a big pitch on a Saturday. He didn't do as much running, uh, <laughs> and he just and just he, he played his own game. You know, tactically, mm-hmm. I, I, I had no concept to what the team needed. He just wanted to get the ball and play, but so strong, uh, good with both feet, uh, but an, an absolute madman, uh, and was more interested in his pool than he was. <laughs> We we playing football. We used to love playing pool with Cy Ferry and all the all the younger players, which are, the stories are legendary. <laughs> Brilliant. What was Gordon Strachan like with you? Was he was he a good influence in your career? Yeah, he was massive for me, and and still is. It's still somebody I you know speak to in terms mm-hmm. of coaching and management as well. Uh, has been a great help in that regard as well, but. Uh, in terms of my career, I think he, he he pushed me to levels that you know I, I didn't think I could I could get to. Was, I think he's seen my my determination and my drive, and and just basically pushed that to, to to the limits, and knew he could keep getting more out of me if he keep if he kept pushing me. 
he was he was quite hard. Uh, although I was probably one of his favourites. We used to always say he had his his favourites, Nakamura, uh, Lenny, and and uh, Venegora Hesling were they were the untouchables. They never got right. any any especially Nakamura. I love Nakamura, <laughs> but in terms of myself, uh, Aidan McGeady would get it all the time. But he quite often came for players like me or Aidan, uh, Lenny occasionally. Uh, players that he, he could get a reaction from, and then mm-hmm. he would just give you a thumbs up at the end of the game, or a, or a pat on the head that felt it felt amazing. It was mm-hmm. like you know, it was what you craved that that kind of satisfaction from him. Uh, but a superb manager and, and a superb man, really a, a great man. Uh, and and I'm sure all the players that that have played under him would would say that. Yeah, and obviously the. The game, a game during that sort of stuck out was Scotland game against France at hand, and you scored the one in goal. Just the feel, just what was the feeling like of that day? That was incredible. It was, uh, it was uh, the, probably the one of the few games in my career where everything goes to plan. Mm-hmm. Like that, the it was almost like Walter Smith had played the game before we played the game, in, in his head, and I'm, I'm sure it didn't. Ha- <laughs> didn't happen as often for him either but uh, he just the whole week the the way we prepared there was a belief that squad was was probably the best Scotland squad I was involved in yeah. in terms of a good mix of youth and experience uh, top top players Barry Ferguson uh, was in his kind of prime James McFadden Kenny Miller uh with Davy Weir, who was a kind of rock at the back, Craig Gordon, Alan McGregor, uh, Davy Marshall fighting for the kind of goalie yeah. spot. It was a a top team, and just the the preparation was was perfect. We we had a belief, we had a game plan, uh, we carried it out to the letter, and and everything Walter said would happen uh, happened, and we managed to get a, a famous victory, and we're we're really unlucky not to. To qualify to that group, which was a such a difficult group, mm-hmm. uh, and and you know to to get so close to the last minute of the game against Italy, still with a chance to qualify, shows how how good a team that was. Yeah, definitely. You pick up an injury in your first season at Celtic. You missed five months, including the the last sixteen ties in the Champions League. But was it so just to be sitting in the sidelines during that time? It was, yeah, because I felt like I. You know, it was difficult in the beginning. You're at a new club. You you try to prove yourself and and get in the team and stay in the team. And I felt like I'd kind of, you know, got over that and was starting to hit a bit of form. And then uh, I remember, I don't know who it was against, but a Saturday I landed just awkward on my knee. My knee hyperextended. Right. Uh, came off straight away. We were winning the game, and I knew we were playing. It was Man United on the on the Tuesday yeah. night in the last last end. Uh, in the second last uh, group game, yeah, and I felt okay. I iced it. That it wasn't kind of agony. I thought, you know, hopefully I've I've got away with this. Uh, and then on the Sunday afternoon, it just started swelling up like re- really big. And then by Monday, I thought there's no chance to be playing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I went for a scan, and it was worse than that. That I had damaged my posterior cruciate ligament, uh, which. That doesn't. It's not like your anterior cruciate ligament, which requires surgery, but it's you need to be in a brace for twelve mm-hmm. weeks, and uh, you need to be very careful with it. You need to strengthen then the muscles round about it, and kept kept me out for a long time, and uh, kind of stopped my my progress really at, at the club at that time, and uh, w- was a difficult one because of the obviously the Champions League we qualified in the AC Milan games, yeah. uh, but I think. Injury is, is, is part of the game. And again, it's something you have to live with. And uh, that that missing out on these games, I think, you know, makes your determination even more and and, and gives you that uh, gives you that uh, drive to, to go and, and do more to, to get back in the team. Yeah, definitely. You won the, the league in the Scottish Cup in your, your first season. Were they kind of great feelings just to win the trophies? Yeah, I think if, if you go to Celtic, then you're you're going to, to win trophies or you're definitely going to be judged. Uh on winning the ball. But even even that that it was I remember a few games just trying to get over the line. 
Mm-hmm. We, we beat Motherwell at home 1-0 and it was one of the worst games of football ever. And I, I remember the manager saying, you know, this is, you know, the, when the pressure's on, you have to, you know, cope with it. You have to uh, make sure you, you get over the line and win these games. With it. When we won it, it was away at uh, Kilmarnock where yeah. Naka scored a last-minute free kick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was challenging and, and the psychological uh, challenge and getting over that I think was big uh, and then winning the Scottish Cup I actually came on as sub that game for, for Lenny late in the game uh, and, and to win that and win the double in my first season was, was super brilliant the following season you you start off, off at right back before Celtic signed uh, uh, Andreas Hinkle it was, was that just a position you never ever enjoyed playing no you need to run uh, so <laughs> That's why I wasn't so good at it. Uh, I, I was. I think what what I'd done at that point was Gordon Strachan uh, could trust me. He, mm-hmm. he felt like he could trust me. He felt like you know he, he used to always. He had a great saying that, that has stuck with me forever, really. And and he said, y- "You're not always going to have a great game, but what you can always be is a good teammate." Yeah. And and that was something that 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 team had to be honest was. You know, we, we, you aren't always going to play well. You aren't always going to do exactly, you know, what, what we're intending to do. But if we can all be there for each other and be good teammates, then, then that's what makes you a great team, in, in my opinion. And he was big on that. And I think he trusted me in, in that, that regard that he knew I wasn't going to be flying up the wing and, and putting crosses in, but he knew he could trust me. He knew I could, I could pass the ball uh, so he could rely on me with, with, with the ball. He knew that I would be giving everything for the team and it was a, a position I was never going to excel in, but mm-hmm. uh, it was something that needed done because it, we had a few injuries and uh, he, he felt like that was the best solution, which for, for myself, it was difficult, uh, but but he trusted me and that trust that he gave me was always uh, was something that, that gave me great belief as well. Brilliant. Yeah, you qualified for the last 16 of the Champions League, beating AC Milan along the way before playing Barcelona. What was the highlights of that European campaign? Uh, the, the last minute goals, I always remember. And any, I'm sure the manager spoke about this was that the fine lines at, at Champions League level, it was it was the pinnacle for me, the, 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 the level of football, the level of player. I, I remember my dad used to always come to the games and sometimes criticised me on, on the way home and, and I would look at him and like you, you're playing against Kaka or mm-hmm. Nzaki or Messi or Henri and, and literally one half step in the wrong direction and it's a goal yeah. you know the, 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 I actually remember after the games you weren't as much physically tired it was mentally mm-hmm. tired because of the, the level of concentration you needed in, in these games and you would be up till God knows what time because of the adrenaline, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, especially the games at Celtic Park, the noise, uh, the adrenaline that that created kept you up till four or five in the morning uh, after the games. But brilliant experience, uh, brilliant games to, to be involved in. Uh, and, and Celtic Park in those nights were, was, was sensational. And that season, obviously, the you've, you've won the league in the last day. It's- would you say that that kind of season with Rangers, obviously Rangers were flying that season as well. Would you say that was again the hardest fight of your your t- time at Celtic as a team, or just try to get that league one? Yeah, that was brilliant for me. It was the best one uh, for, for different reasons. I think with seven games to go, we looked dead and buried. Mm-hmm. We managed to win the last seven games too, which were against Rangers, mm-hmm. uh, which were. You know, huge games, pressure games where, where you have to deliver. And, and like I said, that team, you know, could really, you know, you could you could trust your teammates on those nights to stand up and be counted. I remember the one of the, the Rangers games that started with Barry Robson. It was an elbow on, on Christian Daly and just set the tone really for, for both of those games to be, they were really high high pressure, high tension games and, and to, to come out on top and both of them and go on and win the league. Tommy Burns funeral yeah. was on the Monday or the Tuesday before we played Dundee United on the Thursday because the, the league actually finished on a Thursday night yeah. because of Rangers. They had got to the Europa League final mm-hmm. and 
again, that game, I don't know if it was because of Tommy or what, but it, it was like similar to France where uh, not everything went right, but I just didn't ever think we would lose a game. Mm-hmm. I just didn't. And there was no point I thought we're not going to win this. I think, you know, whether Tommy was looking over us or whatever it is, it just felt like it was meant to be. Uh, and we won the game 1-0 without playing that well. Uh, and I remember about 10 minutes to go, you could see the helicopter flying over uh, Tannadice and yeah. that feeling of, of knowing that, you know, this is this is over, we've won this. Uh, was brilliant. And then after the game, we had T-shirts for Tommy and uh, the celebrations were always, were always kind of, for me, the, the most enjoyable bit because you've worked so hard for to achieve something. And then to, to celebrate with your teammates and people that, that you've done it with is, yeah. is a brilliant, brilliant moment. And you mentioned Tommy Burns there. Just how good an influence was he for your career? He was brilliant. He was actually at Newcastle uh, mm-hmm. when I used to go yeah. down there. J- just before I signed full-time, he was there with Kenny Dalglish. So I'd known him from then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with Scotland and then with Celtic. So, I'd, you know, I, I came across him at loads of different points in my career. And, a brilliant guy, brilliant football person uh, who really cared about, you know, people and, and wanted to make you better and wanted to try and try and take you to that next level on, on the training pitch, so enthusiastic. But uh, more than that, just as a person, a, a brilliant human being who, who loved a laugh, was always some of the stories uh, with Tommy and, and Gordon and Walter and Ali and... Uh, Brilliant stories, and uh, it was it was a sad time, but uh, like I said, a time where you felt like he was there looking over you and helped us to, to that title. Yeah, the following season, the one kind of thing I want to touch on is how how much did you enjoy playing alongside Steve McManus? Just formed a really good partnership. Yeah, I love playing with Big Mac. I think I think sometimes in football, you know, a partnership just develops. You know, yeah. that you we. We both weren't the quickest, so I think that that helped. Where we 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 were comfortable playing, you know, a bit deeper, or or you know, we 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 weren't kind of fighting against each other. Uh, he was left footed, I was right footed. It, it gave us a really good balance. Uh, we got on off the pitch, uh, and we really cared. We cared about you know Celtic. We cared about our own careers. We wanted mm-hmm. to work hard, so we would always do extra and, and work on our game. So. Uh, it was, you know, I think as a as a partnership, a really good partnership that, you know, I don't think individually we were both great players, but together we were we were very strong, which uh, I think in a team environment is is the most important thing. Definitely, yeah. You won the league cup as well. You beat Rangers at Hamden. How how did you find an old firm derby? I loved them. Uh, that that one in particular was the the most nervous I've ever been for any game. We, we stayed in the Hilton Hotel the day okay. four games in Glasgow. And I remember, uh, it was a Sunday, I remember in the morning of the game, sorting tickets. That was always a, a big problem at Celtic with my family, <laughs> the, getting all the tickets organised. And I remember being on the phone and all my family being really excited. And, and I was shitting myself. That was, you know, I was, you know, thinking an old firm game, Normally, is is a big game and and, and a high pressure game, and losing it is is obviously you know a, a big disappointment. But I thought a cup final to lo- a league game, you can get back the following week or mm-hmm. they can drop points. But a cup final, I felt like was it was a, a one off game, and I, I felt like it was such a big game that we we had to win. Uh, and it, it's probably why it was such a bad game. I think that the manager was the same. He played. He played me in midfield. He, he changed the team that day really well, to be honest. It, it, it made it one of the worst games ever uh, in terms of a viewing uh, spectacle. But tactically, he, he stopped Rangers. They were a very, very good team at that point with Mendes, Barry Ferguson in midfield. They controlled the game with, with the, the, the quality they had in midfield. And he put me in there to, to try and destroy the game. He played McGeady through the middle with... Scott McDonald to right, yeah. to be a threat on the counter attack and, and cause uh, David Weir and I think it was Sasa Papach problems who, who weren't the quickest. So mm-hmm. tactically, the manager was really clever that day and 
uh, we managed to win 2-0. I think it was an extra time we, we won 2-0. Yeah, and obviously that season you won the, the Writers' Player of the Year. See, obviously, winning trophies as a team's good, but how good is it to win a, a personal award? Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, at the time, players will say, oh, it's a, a team game, and, and that's your kind of stock answer. But I, th- I think for me, uh, it was important because of the, you know, I had a bit of stick. Uh, when when I originally went to Celtic and, and the supporters when I played it right back took a bit of criticism. So to, to come through that and then and then get recognised uh, for my performances for for myself was was good. But ultimately, like I said in the beginning, you were only ever judged on on winning trophies, yeah. and, and that was that was always the the main thing at Celtic was winning the league and and as many trophies as you could. Uh, was was where you were judged. So it was it was nice to, to be recognised, but my, my aim was always on on winning the league and winning uh, the the league cup and the Scottish Cup as well. Definitely. How disappointing was it to lose the title that season? Yeah, it was really. I, I think we were we were actually probably a better team that season, but so were Rangers. Uh, and we we played Hibs our second last game of the season away and, and drew nil nil, and that was where we kind of lost it, we gave Rangers. If we had won that game, we would have been in the upper hand going into the last day. And I always think those last days where it can go either way, I think the team that has it in their hands is a lot more in control and, and it allows you to focus on your own game when when the other team need to do X, Y and Z, then you, you lose focus. And we played Hearts at home. I, I think we drew the game, but we were poor and the, the performance... Uh, wasn't great, but Rangers won anyway yeah. and, and won the league. So uh, it was disappointing to to lose it uh, in, in that way. And then obviously at the end of that season, Gordon Strachan leaves and Tony Mobley comes in. Like, what was your thoughts of that that transition? Yeah, I was excited. It was somebody I'd worked with before. I felt like the the style of football uh, would be suited to the club, the attacking football that that Tony liked to play. Uh, and like I said, because he was somebody I knew then. Then I was excited and looking forward to working with him. I was gutted when the gaffer left, but I think he had said, he, you know, he actually probably wanted to leave the, the season previous, but because right. of Tommy and everything that mm-hmm. happened, he stayed on another year. And then uh, after that, he, he decided to go. It must be playing for Celtic is very difficult uh, physically, mentally, but yeah. being, being the manager, uh, I, I I can only imagine how how difficult it is, you know, in terms of the pressure uh, and mentally what you have to cope with. So I think he'd he'd been there a long time, and it was probably time for him to get out. Yeah, oh, well, it was a really good start under Tony Mobile. Like, obviously, you left during that season, but why do you think it never worked for Tony Mobile at Celtic? Uh, that's a good question. I think they were, uh, the the team probably needed. To, to start to evolve and to change. Uh, a lot of players left possibly too soon, possibly mm-hmm. too quickly. Uh, and I just think, you know, if, if I haven't been a manager now myself, every job at, at different times has different challenges. So uh, I think he just struggled to, to kind of change that team while still winning football games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do, but he just didn't get to get through that and, and, you, you're judged, as, as a manager, you're judged in winning football games and none more so than, than Celtic. And when the pressure comes, then then it's difficult to to kind of get get through that, especially when, like I said, he was changing the squad and, and the players weren't used to, to playing for Celtic and, and they couldn't get over that. And then, obviously, the your, your contract's running out and there's a bit of a dispute. Like, can you just remember how it ha- what kind of happened before you left? Yeah, I always think these things in the media played out worse than, than they are. I yeah. think my, my contract was up in the summer. Celtic had a valuation. Um, myself and my agent had a valuation of, of, of what I felt I was worth. It was different. And, you know, that, that's the way football works sometimes. I wanted to stay at Celtic. I would have stayed, you know, for the rest of my career. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I needed to be paid what... What I was, what I was due, what other players within the squad who were playing week in week out were, were getting, and th- that didn't happen. So there was no, there was no fallouts. There was no hard feeling. That's that's life, uh, and and you move on. And then Middlesbrough, a joint bid accepted for you and Barry Robson. Like, was it was Gordon tracking the manager? Middlesbrough at that point was that why that happened? 
Yeah, he was. He was. He took, or he, he tried to take a lot of it. He took uh, Robbo, Chris Killen and Willow Flood. Mm-hmm. And then he took Scott McDonald yeah. and Stephen McManus in the summer. Uh, but yeah, that was, I was, I'd actually done a medical. I was pretty much everything was, was ready to go. And for some reason, the, the secretary had left on the Monday night. He had went home. So I was just going to sign on the Tuesday morning and then Wigan came back in that Monday night and, and the rest is history, <laughs> so to speak. And how, well, obviously you had a really good time at Celtic, but how, what's your kind of favourite memories for your time at Celtic? Uh, I just think it's a brilliant club to, to play for. The, the experience at Celtic Park and old firm games on Champions League nights, uh, winning trophies it is a an amazing football club and uh, the the whole experience in terms of the the people uh, within the club at the time that I met and, and are still close with to this day. Uh, anytime you go back to the club, you know, you're welcomed with, with open arms. It's it's a special football club and uh, I really enjoyed every every second I was there. Brilliant. You move on to Wigan, how excited were you to try England and what Roberto Martin is? Yeah, I always wanted to play in the Premier League. I obviously going way back to Newcastle. I signed there with the intention of playing in the Premier League. It didn't um, materialise. So then the opportunity later in my career, it was I, I wanted to challenge myself against the best. Having played in the Champions League, played for Scotland, those were great experiences, but like felt like one-off kind of games. The challenge of playing week in, week out against the best players uh, was really appealing. It was a different club in a sense to, to Celtic. I remember my first day's training. We trained at the stadium and training was very quiet. We, everyone was just kind of going about their business. Tra- the, the game at the end was was so slow. There was no contact. And after about five minutes, I thought I need to I need to kind of change this and I, went, I don't know who it was, but I went right through someone and won the ball, but like cleaned them out. And I'll never forget the whole session just kind of stopped and was like, what the? <laughs> and and I thought like, this is, I've come from Celtic. This this was, you know, what we did every day. Yeah. And, and Wigan were languishing down. They went bottom. They were about fourth or fifth bottom at the time. Quite comfortable actually compared mm. to other years. But uh, I thought I, I need to change this. And, and, Roberto had signed me really, I think, for that reason, you know, for my character more than, than my ability as a football player. He wanted to to have a leader in, in the dressing room. He wanted to change the the, the dynamic of the squad and, and the, the energy within the squad. And uh, I felt like that's what that's what I did. Uh, but it was it was a challenge in a sense that it was a different club. Obviously, the support as well as it's I think they're amazing supporters. They're small in number, but they're they're brilliant in terms of, you know, the passion that they bring. But it's different, obviously, for Celtic. So, getting used to all that in the beginning was was a bit of a challenge. But uh, it's a club that I absolutely love. That, like I said, the the people, the supporters, they're small in numbers, but they're 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 huge in terms of what they bring to that football club. Definitely. How obviously, Stephen. Joins, joins as well. How excited were you to be reunited with him? Yeah, it was great. He had left Birmingham and was just looking for somewhere to train. Uh, and I asked the gaffer and the gaffer said, yeah, great, bring him in. And he came and trained pre-season for about three or four weeks. And then uh, the gaffer decided to, to sign him up for the season, which was was good We. Obviously, to have played Scotland together was was great. Having been at Newcastle as kids, but uh, to then we, we played some Premier League games together and and trained together every day. Uh, we had kids and that, so our families were were close together. It was uh, it was a, a brilliant time for for us and for for the family. Brilliant. What were your first couple of seasons like at Wigan and like been named club club captain? Must have been an honour as well. Yeah, it was. That was after. It was in the summer, so I signed in the January in that summer. Uh, Roberto made me made me captain, and uh, I had a great relationship with him. He was somebody very different to Gordon Strachan and how he how he approached his football and, and coaching. I learned a lot uh, tactically from him, how he set teams up, 
to to be tactically stronger than the opposition. And and we, it was a great team to play for in a sense that we we played everyone toe to toe. We weren't you know a, a, a team down the bottom that would park the bus and and try and uh, scrape one 0 wins. We would go to Old Trafford to Anfield and we would try and dominate the ball. We'd try and dominate uh, possession and and create. 1v1s create goal scoring opportunities and it was it was a great for me a great style of football and, and to learn uh, a bit more on the coaching side and, and how you set teams up uh, through Roberto was was big for my, my football career but also going into my coaching career as well. Yeah, definitely. You reached 50 cards for Scotland, just what was that what was that feeling like? Yeah, it was amazing. It was when I when I played for Scotland, it was something you know, I, I set myself as a little goal. I, I felt like, uh, or I feel like it's 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 not really your your quality that gets you that. It's your your attitude and and your commitment to, to your country. I was someone that always turned up to play, no matter how I felt, no matter how I was doing for my club. Uh, sometimes to probably the detriment of myself. Mm-hmm. And now that I've got a double hip replacement. <laughs> uh, uh, but it was something I wanted to achieve and, and to get there uh, was a proud moment for me because w- when you look back, I mean, there's there's loads of better players that have played for Scotland that, than myself, but there's not many that have that have got to 50 caps. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's it was a really proud moment. Brilliant. See that Wigan team, did you feel you could have been kind of doing better in the league instead of like, obviously you, you stay up kind of most seasons, but did you feel you could, you could have got higher up the league? It was a bit of a, a frustration. Uh, we always seem to start the, the league quite slowly and finish right. really fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was a challenging league. It mm-hmm. was there was no hiding place, and and whenever we were we were a smallish squad. Whenever we got injuries or you know a bit of loss of form in some players, we we couldn't chop and change like other squads. So we we probably were where we should have been in terms of the budget that, that we spent and, and if anything probably overachieved uh most years but we always seem to leave it late which I don't know why. I don't know if we just wanted to make it exciting <laughs> but uh some of our last day escapes and survival was uh like I say really exciting for the supporters but not not too exciting when you were you were playing it because the it was different. It was a different pressure when you were staying to survive and stay in the league, then rather than playing to, to win a league at Celtic, the yeah. pressure was the, the pressure at Celtic was enjoyable. That pressure was was draining and really, you know, took its toll in terms of you mentally and physically. So uh it would have been a lot easier if we'd got the points earlier in the season. Definitely. Uh twelve thirteen, obviously you the mem- what was the memories of the FA Cup run and like, how disappointed were you not to play in the final? The memories are, I think we all believe we could win it when we beat Everton in the quarter final. We actually, in the, in the beginning, I, I'm not saying we wanted out the competition, but the, the manager would change the team. So if we drew with Bournemouth in the first round and then beat them in a replay where a lot of kids played, totally mm-hmm. changed the team. And then we played Macclesfield. Uh, with non-league away again, changed the team, beat them one 0 Didn't didn't actually deserve to win the game. Didn't play great. Uh, I can't remember who we played it, but we played Everton uh, in the quarterfinals, and we we hammered them at, at Goodison Park three 0 Played brilliant football again tactically against a really strong David Moyes side. Roberto was was brilliant tactically. Uh, won the game comfortably. And I think from then we thought we, we can win this. The semi-final was Arsenal, Man City, Millwall and ourselves. Mm-hmm. And when the draw came out and we got Millwall, that was really a kind of, almost like a sign to say, you know, this this is our time. And we beat Millwall fairly comfortably. Uh, I, I know semi-final is easy, but we won 2-0. And, and the final was, a, was an amazing day. Roberto again, tactically. Genius how he set the team up uh, to compete against a Man City team that was, you know, world class, had had cost millions and millions of pounds, but we deserved to win the game. We we played really well in the day. Our keeper made one really good save after about 15 minutes. 
Uh, and that was the only time they really created a chance in the game. And uh, Ben Watson, who was, he was in the car school, I had a car school, me, Sean and Ben uh, used to drive from uh, Wimslow down about 40 minutes away. And for him to break his leg twice yeah. and then come on to, to score the winning goal, it was like a kind of fairy tale moment and a, a brilliant day for the whole town. The, the celebrations... We're, we're quite short that day because we had a, a league game on the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after the season, we had an open top bus through through the, the town of Wigan for the for the uh, training ground into the the main city centre, and it was it was amazing to see so many people uh, out in Wigan and and experiencing that was was brilliant for for the club and the whole town. And obviously, he's got relegated as well that season. Like how how so was that to to get relegated that season after winning after such a high FA Cup. Yeah, it was. It's it's a highs and lows of football. It's uh I think because of the FA Cup, our squad got really stretched. I mm-hmm. actually played I played on the Tuesday night in a league game before the cup final with two injections. Uh, my hips at that point were uh, were really giving me a lot of trouble. And uh, like I said, I played in the uh, a league game we lost three two to Swansea and then Players were getting rested for the cup final. We were carrying little niggles, and then uh, the squad just got stretched because of the the cup. And I, I don't care what anyone says. I think you take your eye off the ball a little bit when you're in a cup final, yeah. and you have that opportunity. Then the, the focus does go a little bit into that. Or, or like I said, the squad just gets stretched because of the extra games. And ultimately, we were we ran out of games. We we lost to Arsenal and and got relegated. And uh, that was the kind of the eight year stay for the club was was over in the Premier League, and then obviously you you pick up an horrendous injury that keeps you out for nearly a year. Like just how hard was that physically and mentally to get back from? Yeah, like I said, it was my I had had two hip surgeries in the summer of twenty ten mm. uh, that were really successful, and I, it was probably those next three years was as as good as I'd felt as a footballer. I think physically. Uh, I was I was at my peak uh, and I had no pain in, in terms of my hips. But then that season, they, they started the pain and my left one started coming back. So that summer I went back in for surgery uh, again. Originally, the, the surgeon, he, he kind of thought, you, he said you could be finished here. You could, you know, I might not be able to fix it. He said, but I'll go in and have a look and, and see if, if I can't fix it, then then you're kind of, you're done. Mm-hmm. Uh but he did, he, he done the kind of full surgery again. I, I took my time because I, I knew, obviously, from the first, I probably rushed the first one a little bit. I was so eager to get back. Uh, I knew this time I could I could take my time uh, and make sure it was as good as it could be. But I played four games after that. He, he said, I could, and, and even during the, the rehab, there were certain things that I couldn't do mm-hmm. that, that the, the the physio was just like mm, just leave it. So although I got back, I sometimes felt like I was kind of I was playing on one leg, uh, and I, and I got back to a level, but I was I was never never the same physically after after that third third surgery. And how hard was it to to come back into the team? And kind of obviously there was a couple of new managers that came in since then. But did you did you feel as if you were the same player after that? No, was it? Was it difficult? No, like I said, I, I think physically I, I was never the same player. I think mentally I was, you know, I was as good as I'd, I'd ever been because I think to get through any injury, it's, you know, it challenges you mentally. Uh, Owen Coyle was was brilliant uh, mm-hmm. when he came in. I was I was injured. I never actually played under Owen Coyle, but he was great with me. Uh, and I was, you know, he used me as a captain to always be a part of the dressing room and uh, speak to the players and, and be involved. Uh, then Uwe Rosler came in and he was brilliant with me as well. He gave me more responsibility in terms of coaching uh, within the academy and also half time I would report. So I'd watch games for the stand and report down to him and the coaching staff at half time. So uh, whilst I wasn't playing, I was I was starting to, to transition into that coaching uh, role or, or, or think about the coaching role uh, after my career finished. And was it always a plan again to coaching after football? Yeah, it was. I think from my young age, I, I started my B licence when I was about 26, 27. Uh, and 
I always knew from a young age that I wanted to stay in football and coaching, whatever, you know, wherever that was in terms of academy or first team or I didn't really know, but I knew I wanted to to stay in football and, and use my experience uh, to, to get into coaching. And obviously you, you retire in February. Was it the hardest decision you've ever made, but finally kind of admitting that you had to stop playing? Uh, no, it was actually, it wasn't a hard decision. I was finished anyway in a sense yeah. that I, I could hardly move. I could train one day and then I'd need to recover for three or four days and, and even then I, I knew I wasn't at 100% and it was actually Malky Mackay came in uh, when he came into the club the physio that he'd worked with before was physio at the club so he knew how how much I was struggling mm-hmm. and it was almost Malky had said you know why don't you just chuck it and, and I needed someone to kind of say that mm-hmm. uh, and I was, I was like I said, I was coaching. I'd done more coaching in the academy at that point, uh, and and that was, you know, my it was it was easy in a sense that I could just go and do that. But I needed, I I didn't want to be the person that said I'm 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 finished. Mm-hmm. You know, I almost needed needed somebody to, to to say it for me. And obviously after that, you're you're working a bit in the academy, and Malky Malky leaves. Like, how did you think you were in any contention to get the manager's job? No, I think it's. I think it's difficult when any manager loses their job, uh, and I was I was coaching any anyone really from the under eights up to the under twenty threes. I was mainly with the under fifteens, but I could dip into the under eights. Mm-hmm. I could go with under twenty threes. Uh, I was watching first team games. I was I was starting to really think about you know coaching and and what type of coach I wanted to be. Uh, but when when Malky left. The, the chairman phoned me up that evening, later that evening, uh, and said, could you come to my house t- tomorrow? And his house, it was his parents' house, was just around the corner from mine. And I went around his house and, and he said, you know, we, we want you to be the next manager. Uh, we think you, you know the club. Uh, I was fortunate that I had Graham Barrow, who had been uh, Roberto Martinez's first team coach mm-hmm. and had been assistant manager to to V Rosler, first team coach William Coyle and, and Malky Mackay. So uh, I, I had someone who I trusted who had great experience uh, and I, I leaned on him really heavily, uh, especially early on uh, because I was so so new to it. So uh, it was a it was a challenge. I was only 30, I think I was 32 year old. Uh, so I was still really young but it was a challenge that I was I was keen to take on, and and I felt like I, I knew the club, which which gave me a great chance to 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 change the the dynamic and and the results within the club. Yeah, and the the first yeah your, your first season obviously is a is it in League One? Like how important was it to rebuild? And who were some of the players you felt were important to that season when you went up? Well, I I got the job. If we had five games left in the championship, we were seven points adrift, and the, the the chairman had the the chairman was actually only 24, 25. It was young, young he was younger than me, which was right. interesting. You know, our ages combined probably weren't as old as some some managers. Uh, but it was a good dynamic. We we kind of we bounced off each other well. We were both really passionate about the football club, uh, and he gave me the job and said, "Look, you know, I don't expect you to to keep us up, but." You know, it gives you five games to to kind of get your your yeah. foot in the door, and uh, so we we had five games where we we I felt like we got a bit of pride back. We we beat Brighton at home, uh, but we hadn't had won a home game all season, and we beat Brighton at home in my home debut with a young academy player who I gave his debut. Uh, Tim Chow scored the goal, uh, which which was great. I felt for for the town, and like I said, a bit of pride. And then we just ran out of games. We we drew a couple, uh, and and lost a couple as well. Uh, but it gave me a a taste for it. It, it gave me uh, something to work on for the following season. And I think we were fortunate as well that because we got relegated, so many players, you know, had the quality to play in the Premier League or the, mm-hmm. the Championship. So uh, those players naturally left. Uh, the, the difficulty a lot of them were my friends. I was yeah. their teammate only only weeks before, 
but because you know it was they, they wanted to go it, it wasn't you know difficult decisions I had to make uh, and it allowed me to build my squad uh, from scratch almost and there was only about four or five players had stayed from the previous season and we signed a lot of players to to rebuild the team. And you get promoted in your first season and up to the championship. Did you feel as if you, you could compete at championship level? Yeah, I felt like we'd built a, a young squad that, that could develop and could improve and grow. Uh, we made some good young signings. Uh, the following season, we signed Nick Powell mm-hmm. uh, from Man United. We signed Dan Byrne from Fulham, uh, who, who both went on to do extremely well at, at Stoke and at, at Brighton. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just, it was difficult. The Championship is an unforgiving league. We, we we didn't get off to a disastrous start, but we didn't get off to a great start. And we were we were learning the league. Uh, and, and in that period, we, we didn't kind of pick up enough wins. And, and the, the board decided to, to change the manager after 14 games. And did you feel as if you deserved more time? Like, do you look back now and think you could have turned it around? Yeah, 100%. I think that, the club was, we were moving, the team was moving in the right direction. We, the last five games, we only lost one mm-hmm. uh, of those last five games. We won one and drew three. Uh, so it wasn't form that was, you know, disastrous. Our form was actually picking up. Uh, and I felt like we were moving in the right direction. And the chairman has, has since said that as well, that it's maybe something uh, he regretted uh, looking back on it. But that's football, that's football management. You you have to win games uh, to, to stay in a job. I've, I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, you, you get the, the Chesterfield job. Like, do you remember how that job came about? Yeah, that when, when I left Wigan, I was a, a lot of teams. I got a lot of interviews. A lot mm-hmm. of teams were, you know, into, whenever a job came up, I was, you know... Uh, at the front of the in the front of the kind of and running for it, I, I got interviewed by by loads of different teams, and I felt like that was a a club that could do better. They they had some good players. They had a director of football and Chris Turner, who had been a manager uh, in the Premier League with Sheffield Wednesday, and he was someone I could lean on as well. And and kind of uh, he gave he gave me that experience within my my coaching team. Uh, but as soon as getting in the job, it was I realised after a few weeks that it was going to be really difficult. Chris left after probably three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ched Evans, our main striker, was injured. We sold the two wingers and, and suddenly I was in a job that I wasn't experienced enough to, to cope with it. And, and other managers uh, since then and before me at that club uh, have struggled as well. So it was a, a difficult period, but a period where I learned learned a lot of uh, kind of skills of, of football management and what you need to, to be a good manager. Yeah, definitely. What were your plans after Chesterfield? So after Chesterfield, I felt like, I, you know, I needed to kind of take stock again. It was a really difficult uh, period. It was quite mentally draining, losing games, uh, you know, like the, the kind of... I say stress, it's, I don't feel like it's stress, but the, the pressure of it all was difficult. So I felt like I needed to kind of take time out, regroup, uh, study a bit, start to learn uh, different things. I went to see uh, Brendan Rogers, Sean Dyche, Alex Ferguson. I went over to Ghana to uh, uh, an academy out in Ghana. Right. And, and just took time out to, to kind of solidify different things in my head and, and be clear on, on what I wanted to do in, in my next job. And, uh, it was a good time for, for that to, to do that and obviously Party Thistle comes up How what was that like to, to get a job in Scotland it was good I felt like Party Thistle were a big club who, who weren't who were in a position that, that was false uh, to, to the size of the club uh, as soon as I met Jerry Britton mm. Jackie Lowe and the rest of the board I was excited I felt like it was a you know they were really good people first and foremost, uh, and I was eager to to work with those people and and try and take the club back to to where we all felt it belonged. Uh, and it was I loved my time at the club. If I'm being honest, it was really enjoyable. It changed when the board changed. The mm-hmm. the old board came in. There was a really strange period uh, 
where certain things happened that were really strange, if I'm being honest. And, and you know, a lot of things within the club uh, changed, which which made it more difficult. Uh, but we felt, again, me and Brian felt like we were we were building something. We were we, we actually built one squad to, to stay in the league in the January. Then in the summer, we, we tried to change that to build a squad that was younger, more dynamic, mm-hmm. capable of getting promotion. Uh, and, and got off to a, an indifferent start, I think. It, it was, we'd done really well in the Cup. We beat Ross County, who were a Premier League team. We drew with Hamilton, uh, who were a Premier League team. Uh, and it, but in the league, we'd only drawn twice and lost three games. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of which we had nine men. We had got two sending off. So it was a, it was a funny start to the league. But with, with everything that was happening behind the scenes and in the boardroom, uh, it made it really difficult. And, and ultimately, lost my job again. And see, obviously, like oh, you would kind of management so you can up and down. Like, do you would you get back into management if the right job come up? Yeah, I'd love to. It's, it's something. You know, I've I've had one full season as a manager yeah. and, and, won, and won the league. Uh, so I, it's something I, I I know I can I can do it. I, I've made mistakes at different clubs as as everyone does. I feel like I've learned a lot from those mistakes. I'm still, you know, relatively young in terms of management uh, circles. So uh, I'm keen to get back into football, really, uh, in a sense that whether that be an assistant manager, a coach, an academy coach. I feel like I've got a lot to offer football and uh, I'm, I'm keen to get back in to, to a club that, you know, wants to build someone mm-hmm. to people with people that are aligned to, to my way of thinking. And, and like I said, that was where Patrick Thistle felt that the people at the club were, were were really good and looking for an opportunity like that would, would be really appealing to me. And obviously you do some TV work as well. Do you enjoy that side of the game as well? Yeah, I enjoy it. Like I said, it keep, keeps you involved in football. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I enjoy watching football games, analysing football. I'm doing some uh, one-to-one coaching. I've set up my own business down here where I look after players uh, one-to-one. It's, it's something I feel like, having been a manager, uh, you don't have the time, the staff don't have the time in the week to really look after individuals. So I felt like that was something I could do to, to help players. And I'm working with a few players uh, down in England, which uh, has been really enjoyable, and and I can see their their development. So uh, I'm keeping myself busy that way, but but like I said, eager to to get back in and work with a club that that wants to be successful and uh, as as aligned to to my way of thinking. Brilliant. Are you all right? Closing with some quick fire questions. No problem. Brilliant. Out of your whole career, who would you say was the best player you ever played with? Uh, Sean Maloney, I think. Technically brilliant, uh, one of the best pros I'd ever, I've ever played with. And he had a period at Wigan where he was, I think, one of the best players in the Premier League mm-hmm. uh, in that 2013 season where we won the Cup. Uh, but in the league, he was scoring free kicks. He was he was a top player. and uh, I played with loads of good players, but I'd, I'd probably say just Sean Maloney. And with Sean Maloney, do you think he's going to go far as a coach as well? Yeah, I think he's he's somebody I keep in touch with regular, and uh, he's doing a brilliant job with Belgium. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, working with a great manager in Roberto, but working with top players as well, going all around Europe, uh, watching different clubs and, and studying. So, uh, I think when the time is right, he he will be ready for for a management job where, wherever that may be. Brilliant. Best player you ever played against. Uh, I've got two answers for this. One is the easy one is Lionel Messi, uh, just because he is, you know, one of the best players of all time. And mm-hmm. when we played against him in the Champions League, he scored two goals at Celtic Park, which were they were undefendable in my in my opinion. Uh, but the other one is a guy called Steve Torpy. When I was at uh, Darlington, he played for Scunthorpe. Right. And and I'll never forget the, the look in his face when he kind of realised he was up against a 17-year-old centre-half that just could, couldn't could cope with him. And he, he just kept pointing above my head and the centre-half just kept putting it above and he just kept battering me. And it's the only time on a football pitch where I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, 
when when I when I played against Messi, I knew what to do. I knew how to stop him. I just couldn't do it. Uh, but that day against Steve Torpy, he was he he, he had me, and I, I had to learn from that quickly. Brilliant. Favorite away ground you've ever played at? Uh, Old Trafford is a brilliant stadium for me. It's like it's still got the character of of an old stadium. But it's a modern mass. I think it's seventy odd thousand. It's a massive stadium. But I think the new stadiums, like the, the Emirates, is a, a Arsenal is a brilliant stadium. But it, it loses that character because it's a new, modern, purpose-built stadium. I think the the old stadiums retain that history. And Old Trafford's my my favourite. Brilliant. Favourite film or TV show? Uh, favourite film would be. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. It's, I've watched it a long time ago, but I've watched it many times. Uh, and favourite TV show would be The West Wing. Uh, I, I, I mean, nowadays there's so many, but I remember that yeah. was on, I watched that when it was on DVDs. Uh, and that's a, a brilliant series. So many of them. And uh, I really enjoyed that. Brilliant. Interesting fact about yourself that the viewers might not know. Uh, I'm extremely scared of lifts, right. and very rarely uh, will get uh, unless it's a long, uh, a long, long way up the stairs. Uh, glass lifts are okay, uh, but anything enclosed, I get very claustrophobic. So uh, I got stuck once with Colin Cameron right. on a Scotland trip, uh, and that's I, I got stuck with my, with my grand when I was much younger as well. So I think that's where it comes from, but. Uh, a lot of people don't know and find that bit. People who do know find it very weird. So, <laughs> your best friend in football, uh, Kersey, right. it'll be Brian Kerr. Uh, my, my brother, obviously, but he, he's my brother. Uh, and, and Kersey, when we were at Newcastle, uh, we lived together, we'd done everything together, and uh, it was great recently, obviously, working at Partick Thistle yeah. together again, uh, having been away kind of so long, him being in Scotland, me being in England. Uh, but cares, yeah. and 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 others, you know, Sean, I still keep in touch with uh, Kenny Miller, I keep in touch with, uh, and other people you 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 kind of phone or text. It, I think football is unique in that, you know, you 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 have this this you know bond that's really intense for for maybe you know a year, two year, three year, whatever that may be, and. You, you don't need to speak to that person for a long time, but as soon as you meet up with them or speak to them, then that that bond will will never be broken. It's it's always there. Uh, so th- there's very few people I think you speak to regular, uh, but in terms of teammates and, and and people you bump into, the the bond will will always be there. Well, final question: the best manager you ever played under? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I have to go. I think the two club managers are are Gordon Strachan and, and Roberto Martinez. Uh, both very different, mm-hmm. uh, and and admire them both for for different reasons. Gordon, like I said, is like a kind of uh, a mentor figure. Took me took me to levels that that I never thought you know I could get to. Really pushed me to to be the best player I could be. And then Roberto, for you know a, a different way of coaching, a different way of playing. And, and seeing the game and, and kind of really detailed analysis of, of how he looks at football. And I think another manager would be Walter Smith at Scotland, yeah. who I didn't get the opportunity to, to work with as long as I would have liked, but an absolutely brilliant manager from a tactical point of view, defensively the best I'd worked with, really organised, hard to beat. Uh, but in terms of a man manager, you know, right up there, uh, with the best, I think every player that's played under Walter will, will say that. You know, he, whilst he's, like I said, when I was getting on the bus, he was a little bit scary. <laughs> he was, he was still a brilliant man manager and, and somebody you had so much respect for. Brilliant, Gary. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about your career. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. I'ma just do me, you just do you I swear it's gonna get better real soon 
Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through.